All right, fam, how you doing? This is B Jax with Blackview News. Uh, today, I uh, wanted to have a conversation in regards to abortion, uh, uh, weight, rulings, and how they came about. Um, like everything else in America, uh, most of these horrendous laws came by way of fear. Um, as you can see, the gun laws, you know, all these came by way of fear. Uh, what do you think the guns were used for? You know, when we, when, we, when we let the slaves go, what are they going to do? Okay, so there was always a lot of fear mongering going on in reference to black men. Uh, black men are going to rape you. Uh, black men are going to steal from you. Uh, black men are going to do all types of horrible things to white people. Okay, many of this stems from slavery and guilt. So as we move along, uh, we spoke about the crime bill. I spoke about the crime bill. I have a video in reference to that. Uh, that was also out of fear. Okay. So so now we're going to take a look at, at the abortion laws. Um, here's a here's a lady here who basically uh, I'm going to play this short video for you uh, so that you may uh, yourself see what exactly uh, and how this how this is explained. Okay. So stand by here. This minute, uh, this this video is only for a minute and thirteen seconds, but just a little bit of information to overview um, how this thing came about. Now here's Norma McCorvey. She wanted to terminate her unwanted her unwanted pregnancy. Come to find out, she said she was raped. So, after trying, let's go back here a little bit. After trying unsuccessfully to get an illegal abortion, McCorvey was referred to two Texas attorneys who were interested in challenging the anti-abortion. This is the beginning of the the. Uh, well, actually, this isn't the beginning, but this is part of the the, the uh, feminist movement uh, put in place. And the, the, fe the feminist movement have always been against black men, always, okay? Uh, their whole objective is to take uh, the black woman away from the black family, okay? We need the black women. And I don't think women are falling for this, but they have put things in plan uh, that systematically black women have fallen for this. Uh, and, and I will show this to you. So let me finish the video. Okay, she became known as Jane Roe in court documents to hide her identity. So that's where the Roe came from. So that was just a little video there about um, a little history on how this started, the abortion laws came about, and who was involved. Okay, so you saw it there, you saw that, and you watched that video. Okay, now I'm going to show you another video. Okay, this one doesn't take it long. This is another minute uh, video on how. Remember, once again, this was all about fear during this time, during the '70s. Okay, you know. Black men didn't have jobs, you know, they were starting to demonize uh, black men as being these uh, King Kong, man, these gorilla apes, these, these uh, violent rapists, they're going to rape your, your, your wife, they're going to rape your daughter, they want your blonde hair, blue eyes daughter, you know, they're going to rape you, rape, 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 rob, steal, so these, are, these were the, the words that were tossed around in the media during these times, and they were highlighting you know, black men as being rapists and aggressive animal beasts. So, as you see here in this video, did you know uh, Roe vs. Wade was passed only because Roe lied about being raped? And this is the truth. She lied. She lied about being raped. And so, the story was a terrible that. one. She said she had been gang raped, gotten pregnant, was desperate to get an abortion. 
That's what everyone believed, as long as Jane Roe remained anonymous. Remember, she, re she remained anonymous. And she said she was gang raped, okay? But at this time, it was put out there about the black man savagely raped her, okay? So this is, this is what it was known as. So this was the fear. Yeah, we need to get this abortion thing because I, by golly, I wouldn't want my daughter. I wouldn't want to be raped by a black man. And I have to hold on to that baby. So once again, as they do every, every turn, uh, this is the conversation in fear. Everything is about fear and every law pretty much uh, has been created to decimate the black man and his family and the black woman as well through fear. Let me finish it. When she went public, she told a different story. You were raped while you were in Georgia? No, I wasn't. You were not? No, I wasn't. Oh, so all those stories that are in the books and so forth are not true? Yes, sir. Yes. They're not true. Right. And it turned out that lying wasn't the only... Dude, there you go. There's Gloria Albright, okay, taking her position, as she always has, to the left of uh, of the, the so-called victim or the woman or the person uh, that's... Uh, so so she's, she's been a tool in this process of destroying black men as well. Uh, <clears throat> you see her in many places, especially when it has to do uh, with a black men. So uh, let's move further embarrassment this darling of the pro-choice forces presented in her personal treaties published last year norma mccorvey told the story of her somewhat sordid life then she still adamantly supported abortion now she adds that to the list of sins she took with her into the baptismal pool okay so now she realizes it's a sin now all those things are lying and in the uh the uh the nastiness the uh the, the, the lust, you know, whatever it was, and, and she lied. She lied there for a long time that she was raped, and this is the reason why she needed to have this abortion, okay, because she was raped. So, so this whole law came out, or the process, the beginning, the seed put into the society was over a lie and fear of black men. Let's finish it. I've cheated people out of money. I've sold drugs. I... You know, I, I, guess I, was, I was an abusive alcoholic for, you know, many, many years. Um, I've done a lot against his teachings. Um, but I, I think the far greater sin that I did was to be the plaintiff in Roe versus Wade. Okay, so, so even right there we have it. Um, it shows that um, there were problems during the time. Okay. She's a problem person, all right? She was on drugs, she sold drugs. These are the type of individuals that are running our lives and are instituting laws, man. These aren't people, aren't righteous people, okay? These are people that have agendas, man. And I'm just putting this out there so that black women and black men can see where this started, okay? So when this next election comes up, you have information that you can make, you know, your own determination. None of this is, is, is good for black people, period. It has nothing to do with us. We shouldn't even be voting on this or even really having a discussion about this because this, this is only for the white dominant society. Okay, so I'm going to show you the web page here. Um, here's the Planned Parenthood uh, web page. As you can see here, um, the doors opened in 1936. This I was checking this one out here, and it talks about. It says that uh, <laughs> Margaret Sanger, together with her sister um, Ethel Byrne and fellow um, activist Fania Mendel, opened a birth control clinic in Brownsville, Brooklyn. So you see what I'm saying? So, so you want to put this around black people and shit in Harlem. Okay, she opened a clinic in Harlem. What the hell did we do? We need it. This is how they disguise it as in response to many black women, not black families, just black women. In response to black women being denied access to New York City's health 
in social services. At the height of the Great Depression, the New York Urban League endorsed Margaret Sanger's opening of a new birth control center. Now this is the Urban League here. Okay, a known racist, Margaret Sanger, a known racist in Planned Parenthood, being funded, federally funded, knowingly accepts her. Even though she's known to do work with racism and be part of the KKK, they knowingly accept her. They do things right in front of us, thinking that we're stupid. So you gotta look during this time, they were having abortions. These black people look like they're having a good time out here. But the point I'm trying to say is, is look where you're putting it at. Okay, now here we go. Dr. Louise Young, first black woman to practice medicine in Maryland. Like, like why are they so, uh, they want to point out she's the first black woman to practice medicine in Maryland, opens clinics. Because they used, they, they used other blacks to institute this into our neighborhoods, into our way of life. They used black doctors that had friendly faces to push this on to black patients. All right, birth control is no longer classified as I've seen. Nothing wrong with using a condom or taking a pill, you know, you, you know, but to actually drink that baby up out of you, I mean, that's a whole nother thing. And women think they're ready for it. This thing will haunt you the rest of your life. Birth control devices through mail from Japan. Who do you think they were using this stuff on? Who do you think they practiced on before they even got to, to the mass uh, majority of people? Black people. The start of a movement. Planned Parenthood is proud to be part of a historic movement for women's rights fighting for access to sexual and reproductive uh, health care services at home and abroad. Here you go. Thelma Patton. Law serves the black community. See? Black community. Why is it so, why, why is it so big on the, uh, the black community? <clears throat> Laws became one of the first black women to OBGYN in Texas. Why, 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 why is it a big deal that it's a black woman to be the first OBG? Because this is how they use to pass it into our neighborhoods. Does it speak of the first white woman to practice to practice this stuff and do it? I don't think I saw that. But you have to remember at that time the fear that you know black babies were growing at a number, a alarming number. So now this is a new era for women. What about the what about the man? Birth control is legalized for married couples. They may use contraceptives. Nothing wrong with that. There you go. Indian health services begin targeting Native Americans for family planning due to high birth rates. Due to high birth rates. The Indian Health Service begins targeting Native American Indians. Look, it tells you right here. The Indian Health Services are taught. Why would the Indian Health Services begin targeting Native Americans when it's Indian Health Services for family planning due to high birth rates? Or do you do you think the Indians are tired of high birth rates? Do you think the the Native American was trying to keep their high birth rates down? This is bull. The fact that it started over a lie and fear in itself kills the whole thing. Listen, you know, people rape and incest. I dig it. But that's it, uh, Black Views. I just wanted to uh, share some light on this information here um, with the, the Roe versus Wade, where it began. Who were the players and part of it and how it began uh so once again my job is just basically to uh, to bring this information to the black viewers okay and you can make the determination what you want to do with it these are just my opinions i personally wouldn't vote for anybody that's supporting any of this garbage because it has nothing to do with black people in fact it's doing all the things to hurt black people 
okay so once again i want you to have a good day if you like the video click the like also subscribe i'm getting better and better thank you